Hello, my friends. Hope everybody's having a good day so far. Let's get into it, shall we? So, yay exorcisms, right? Everybody's all like, oh my god, I want to be an exorcist like the priests. No, you really don't. But in the case of that you do need to find a way to make the bullshit be gone, um, Pastor Swope wrote an exorcist field guide <clears throat> to blessings, consecrations, and the eradication of malevolent entities. And it goes through and it has different things in either Gaelic or in English that are fairly well translated um, as far as what I've been able to see. And it does get into understanding and working with the clerical stuff. Now, when it comes to Christian and Catholic magic, you have to deal with transmission of energy through the apostolic lines. Without that, you're just saying empty words. That being said, exorcism is a type of holy speech. It's to either conjure something or to banish something using those terms. So one of my favorites is on page 228 to two, oh, let's just let's call it 233 of uh, Transcendental Magic, It's Doctrine and Ritual by Elphys Levy. This is one of my favorites because it's one of the things that allows for breathing towards the cardinal directions. You know, you don't have to necessarily call on God as like Jesus, God and the Holy Spirit, but it does give like the spirit of God moved upon the waters and breathed into into the face of man the breath of life. Be Michael my leader and Sabtiel my servant and in and by thy light. Right? Well, if you go through the books and you dig into those things, I don't read this out loud very often, but I like it. You know, you go and you figure out, okay, well what firmament does this come from? And if you read the Sefer HaRaziel, um it actually goes into and breaks down all of the different firmaments, all of the different angels and what they do, so that way you actually learn who these things are that you're calling upon in order to protect you. Um, but governing elemental spirits, working with the elemental spirits, the gnomes, the sylphs, the undines for the water, you know, all of these things are viable under the right context. You just have to form your own type of connection. So you have to build your own lineage in this case to connect with these things. So you can break down the ingredients of what these creatures are, what the names of them represent into their planetary, astrological, and elemental qualities. So that way when you make your incense or when you're making your blend, you create a mini version of what would be Michael or what would be one of the other names of heaven, right? you've got these different blends that you can do and then you can call the natural memory from earth of those things so you're not calling on them specific you're using an elemental proxy which you don't have to have the exact transmission of so while you go through and you read the books about the high magic or the different magicians and things like that this is a way that you get to engage with those energies without having to have to worry about the lineage transmission. You don't have to go through the clergy training to become a bishop and so on. But if that's your path in life, by all means, go for it. I wish you the best. But some quick ways to do it would be to go through the conjurations in the books and make the herbal formulations for each one of the spirits, each one of the holy angels that you're doing, and then when you call on them, you add that ingredient, so that way that energy is added to the pot, and the smoke comes, and then the spirits can entreat either the water or the scrying crystals, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and this pairs to those images that I shared a little bit earlier today on the different tables of the art. So you can make the astrological, the planets and the planets, or like that one was um, the astrological forces within the astrological forces so that all time is contained within whatever it is that I'm doing. So in those ways, you can not have to worry as much about having viable work that's still powerful. You just don't carry the lineage in which to throw around like I'm a priest 
I'm doing an exorcism unless you go through different rites of initiation, which I'll get into in another video. But yay for uh, being able to create and shift the way that the world works around using plant harmonics, like the plant energies, the plant spirit, the, the thing that the plant represents also carries a story with it. So that by enacting that aspect of the story, like why spikenard is a holy plant is because a pound of it was used to wash the feet of Jesus. So because it had the holy contact with him, using spikenard as an exorcism ingredient is really powerful. And I used that when I was entering into Duat during a ritual back in 2012. Uh, so you have the opportunity to learn and create and to work with very specific types of herbs and plant ingredients that allow you to cross different thresholds, that allow you to go into working with the garden of the, of the world and its spirits without having to go through the blood rites of the church. So hope this helps, folks. Have a great afternoon, and I'll chat with you all later.